OK, boys! Choir master Gareth Malone is three weeks into a new role as a teacher at Pear Tree Mead Primary School in Essex. Carnage rules! The school wants to discover whether an enthusiastic novice... You never know, there might be a giraffe. ...can solve the puzzle of why many boys lag behind girls in reading and writing. Is there no book that could replace the Xbox? Gareth thinks that with vigorous outdoor activity, competition and risk, boys can do better. How do you feel when you see a word you don't know? Sad and I feel like I'm daft. This yeah. is a great book. Up for movies. They have to make progress. Three out of ten. And if they don't improve, I will have egg on my face. Three. Now he's got five weeks to make a difference. He's reading a book. This is about telling the boys that you can be a man and macho and strong and do all those boys' activities and still read. Wow, that is really terrible. Listen to that. Eke Romanis. It's three weeks in to Gareth's new regime at Pear Tree Mead. I'm like the Roman Alan Partridge in this. Any messing around? There'll be no discipline issues this afternoon. He's been given the task of raising the boy's achievement in literacy. Now he must tackle reading. Gareth's regime draws on expert advice and a hunch that if boys are excited about school, they'll learn better. If you get hit, you need to do a fantastically dramatic death, which I will now demonstrate. Would you like to kill me? He's having a bit! I love that death! His plan today is to inspire the boys to read about Romans with the lure of an all-out battle. OK, on your mark, set, let battle commence! <laughs> Sword low, please, Jack. Anyone dead? Jake, can you do a dramatic death for me? One dead. Dead! Dead! Liam! Liam, you're dead! Henry! I killed all three! Oh, well done. Right, round of applause! Head teacher Chris Thurgood is keeping an eye on Gareth's progress. Well, on the face of it, and I've only just walked out, I would say educationally not very much. I suppose they're learning about Roman fighting formations and working as a team. And they're learning a little bit of Latin as well. Okay, back to anime. Back to anime. I think the best bit was when we uh, literally tortured people with flour. That was probably the best bit. Garrett's hoping that the battle will fire up the boys to read about Romans. <laughs> the reality is very different. Many of these boys are more than a year behind in reading. At the end of term, they'll sit a test to measure what difference Gareth has made. If I say, oh no, let's not worry about targets, that's a lot of time of not thinking these children have got to make progress. They have to make progress. There's no ifs or buts about that. Yeah. You know, that's what we're here for. Why this is really, really important. You know, they just don't seem to be able to sit down and read one page. And that's really depressing. And it's really hard to make them do it. Just, they just can't do it. Nationally, a third of boys say they rarely or never read a book by choice. I don't like reading because it's just, like, boring. I don't like using my brain much, so I don't usually read. I look at the pictures. Girls like reading. Yeah. Boys don't. Girls, they just f find some, some weird rotten things old them. book in their house and then they just sit down and they could happily read it. Just forever and ever and ever and not give up. They can just read it. Boys will get bored. One boy, Jack, did
dislikes reading so much that he hasn't brought a book home in years. Nothing to worry about. It's just a chat. Right, Jack, do you want to sit in that chair over there, the blue one? So you said you, um, sometimes you're tired in class because you don't sleep much. Really? Why don't you sleep? What's, what's the matter? I don't know. Sometimes I just can't get to sleep. How do you wind down and relax for bed? I like to read a book and just I, I don't. Down. I just... My mum just says, um, just turn your Xbox off and go to bed. Turn your Xbox off. So how long do you spend on your Xbox when you're playing? About half three till yeah. eight. You can't be the whole time. From half past three till eight. If, that, if I did that, when I shut my eyes, I'd see... All the images from the computer. I do. Do you see the same thing? Yeah? Is that good? Do you like that? Or is it sort of annoying? It's annoying because when I'm trying to get to sleep, I can't. Let's say I made you a deal and I said, I'm going to take your Xbox away forever. But I'm going to give you loads of books. How would you feel about that? <laughs> I don't like reading. I'll give you as many books as you like. I'll give you anything, a book about absolutely anything. How would that go? Um. I no? don't think... Is there no book that could replace the Xbox? Can't sleep? Bye. Nothing is as exciting as Xbox? Blimey, that is worrying. Jack lives with his mum, Jane, stepdad, Neil, and two younger sisters. Jack was fine. When he was at nursery, he was absolutely brilliant. He was speaking French sort of by the time he was two. Absolutely fantastic. And since then, he's just not bothered. Boy, it's so sad to see him just not doing it at all. You know, I just wish there was something I could do. I've tried doing him things at home. I've tried just buying him books for literacy for him to do, and he's just not interested. You can't make him do it. His sister Amy, she does very well at reading. She goes to the library and chooses her own books. She's finished all the levels. I haven't seen a reading book in years that he's brought home. He doesn't bring homework home, nothing. I've only had it since Christmas, and I've, since Christmas I've been playing it for quite a long time. I am addicted to the Xbox. I would be quite good at reading if um, I spent as much time reading as I did. Um, on my Xbox. If Gareth is to change the boy's attitude to books, he needs to find out where the problem starts. Um, you okay to come and have a chat with me about the library? Yes, library, yes. library. library. Come on. Let's go. You're welcome. Well, don't, don't thank me yet. You don't know what you've got to do. These boys say they never go to the school library to borrow a book. So, first things first, when you walk in as a boy, just I just want to see what you do. Go. Where do you go? <laughs> we all sit in the comfort area. Right, so you always grab the comfiest chair. <laughs> Um, we oh, do the puppet show. Yeah, or we do the puppet <laughs> yeah. show. Um, Isn't that for people in year one? Yeah, no, but boys we... like it. OK, so you have a quick play on that. <laughs> one of the reasons that I've come to your school is that I want to try to get boys to read more. Um, what I want you to help me with, to try to get everyone thinking that it's OK to read and that it's a good idea. You, you haven't seen any of these books before? Books I never come into the library. OK. What do you think we need in here? Um, more boy books. Like more um, boyish books. More boyish books. Most of the books in here are like for girls. Like girlish books. It doesn't have just have to be a boy's book. It could be boy and girl book. But I just want you, you didn't see a boy picking up a girl book, would you? I'm just starting reading it. It's reading a girl thing. Do you know what? Do you know what? what? My mum reads. My 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 mum reads. Mom reads. Mom reads. My dad doesn't read. Your dad doesn't read. No, my dad actually. No, no, no. Most men don't read. No. My dad no. reads um, the sports part in the newspaper, yeah. that's it. What do you think? Does your dad read? No. Never see him with a book in his hand? No. You'd no. always see him with a PlayStation controller in his hand, though. Really? <laughs> <laughs> always always with a PlayStation? Really? PlayStation Modern fan. Warfare. Don't get off the game. Really? I don't want 
the teachers to be deciding on all the books. I want you to be deciding on the sorts of books that you that you read. I think we need to go. We need to go and find some books. Okay, boys, let's go hunting books. You're going to dance all the way to London. You made it. Gareth, his three new reading ambassadors, and a teacher are on a special mission. For Gareth, it's a high-risk strategy. He's persuaded the school to hand these boys a large slice of the library budget, and they can buy any books they want. The assignment for Jack, Ross, and Lewis is to make sure that no boy at Pear Tree Mead can ever again claim that books are only for girls. Hey boys, let's make a plan. What kind of books do you want? Fiction books. I don't really like non-fiction. Okay, so we want some fiction books. What do you want? Uh, some action-y adventure books. Ross, what do you um, think? I like space and war. Space books. And um, war. What do you think about war books, Jack? I, I quite like war books. What other things do we might like we want? I think I it's all like funny comic books. Yeah, okay, sort of like cool. joke books. I can't believe you haven't been on a train before. I haven't been on an aeroplane before. But you've been on a train. So boys, here we are. Neither Ross nor Jack have ever been to a bookshop before. Okay, look, here we go. The beginning of the children's section is here. Oh dear, that looks like girls. Yeah. I'm so not a pop star. I'm so not buying it. Read Looks like that. Later. Read that. Read that. that. I like that. Nature one. Lamb's Tales no, from Shakespeare is that. Tales of King Arthur. Sounds good. Is that it? The Wicked Morgan Lufo and the Beautiful Queen. Oh, we had this one. Because we read it in the play. Mr. Malone, this sounds funny. Look. Um, Jiggy and your coos clothes keep disappearing in public. Right. Here we go. Jack. Jack's actually looking interested in some of these books because they're they're shiny, they're brand new, and they're, they're bang up to the minute they've just been written. I think that's that's part of the excitement and the, the fact that it's he's choosing it himself on a trip. Yeah, I'm pleased. But they're now running away. <laughs> I want this book, it looks wicked. Have you found a book? Alex Ryder, have you read that? Yeah, I have, why? They're, they're supposed to be really, really good. <gasps> he's reading a book! Don't you think it's too starry? Too good. No, he's reading a book. It's a miracle. Do you, want to, do you think you might read that one or? Yeah. I've just got a couple of books to buy. <laughs> the Xbox still just beats the books, but... <laughs> Today was really fun, and I like to get out of school sometimes. Your mum should ban you from the Xbox and make you read that book. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was really, really good. That was really good. To see Jack in a bookshop, looking at books and getting excited about books is, is fabulous. I mean, let's face it, he's got to read a book now. <laughs> but at least he was in there. I think that was a major, major achievement. It's really good. It's June, and today Gareth, like all the teachers, is suspending his lessons for the school's annual sports day. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Like many primary schools, Pear Tree Mead Sports Day has traditionally been a team event with no individual winners or losers. I'm just limbering up ready for my, my sports day. They get doing lots of activities, the parents come and watch them. But I'm missing the kind of the cut and thrust. Where's the gold cup? Gareth decides it's time for some real competition. This is so good. Yes, Mr. Malone. Is there no yes. teacher's race? We'll Can we have a teacher's race? Okay. That's more like it. I'm gonna, I'll take it like a man. Apart from Gareth, there's only one male teacher. I might not run in the hat. And he's doing the scoring. So it's Gareth against an all-female lineup. Yes! <laughs> Tell you one thing: there was no way those girls were beating me. Did you win? I did. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A great day for the boys. Finally, we won. Gareth's convinced that boys need competition at school. As someone who lost almost every race and was rubbish at every single sport, I still believe it's important because, you know, it didn't kill me, it didn't do me any harm. It's vital for boys. I know some boys hate being defeated, but for those boys who are going to do things in life, competition is their lifeblood. But Gareth believes competition should not be confined to the sports field. I preferred it when I was running against the girls, if I'm honest. Well done. <laughs> Gareth has come up with an idea for a grand contest that will form the centre of his reading campaign for the next four weeks. The World Cup's coming up, so I'm going to do a reading World Cup. It's a competition, because these boys really like competition. I'm hoping that that will get everyone involved. Over here, please. Just come and sit down over here on the floor. So, it, what happens in a reading World Cup, you may ask? Well, you will choose a different book every single week. Every single week there'll be a little test to see whether you've really read it or whether you're just saying you've read it. Should we do a grand unveiling? Let's, let's move the table round. Ready? One, two, three. For the competition, the boys will be divided into four teams of equal reading ability. Just a quick question, did you come up with a team name? Oh, the German nincompoops. If they can prove in a weekly quiz that they've read their books, they'll win points for their team. The young, handsome men. Unbelievable. They're called the young, handsome men. Where are they, I don't know. They'll be in later. They'll be in. They'll be in tomorrow. For the winning team, there'll be prizes and a gold cup. Well, what's your team name? Teletubbies United. Teletubbies United. But everyone else, I should have. The crackle of excitement, that lovely noise. That's, that's boys talking about books. It's brilliant. Uh, for a prize, people will start reading more, And then people should hopefully find reading quite fun and interesting. I'll give it, I'll give it 75% in one. Max, where are you? Jiggy and pants, yep, yeah, off you go. I think up until now I have been quite concerned about how Gareth is going to achieve his um, target, the reading, you know, through the sorts of things he's been doing. And I think today's the first time I've actually thought there does seem to be emerging um, a method to his madness, I think. Not all the boys are convinced. I've looked through all the books in there and I still don't um, feel that I'm interested in any of them. I'll, I don't think I'd ever get to like reading because it's just basically boring. Gareth wants the boys to get off to a flying start. Already on page two. Shortly after Gareth arrived, the boys cleared a space for an outdoor classroom. Gareth hopes this will be a perfect place to read. The talking ends. Don't call me miss. Start reading your books. Thank you. Mr. Malone, can we go to toilet? No. Jack Law, come and read to me. I think it's really important that we use this outside space as a classroom. There are lots of distractions, but it's just so something a bit more memorable that we're outside. I think that's, that's really important. Here's Jack. Jack, come and sit down here. How are you getting on with this? Um, are you genuinely on page 44? Yeah. Shall I test you? Yeah. Um, where are they from? What county? France. They're from France. The boys. They're from France. Okay. French soldiers. Yeah. What army are they fighting for? They're fighting for England. So oh, they're French soldiers fighting for England. Yes. Yeah. I see right through it. I know that you haven't read it. I know that you're not on page 44 of this. You got this this morning. Now you're not that fast. I mean, you're not a bad reader, but you're not fast enough to get through all of this and remember it. How are you going to be a better reader if you don't actually read it? You're not. You're not going to improve at all. This is not reading. Yeah, that's not reading. 
reading, actually going through the words. There, this is a great book. Callum isn't even pretending to read. Callum, come and read to me. Jamie, T, Jam, no, yeah. you didn't want to play, Jamie. TJ looked across the room and saw Danny watching them. Okay. Right, hold it there. Right. So, I mean, you can you can quite clearly read well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next week, I would love to be able to say, Callum got ten out of ten because he I mean, read the book. That'd never be. Why not? Because I'm not I'm not a quick reader. It'll take me about you four weeks. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You are a quick reader. You're a very quick reader. You just whip through that. But you're not into this as a book. No. A great book. I thought it was boring. I think all books are boring. I like watching films because you know what's actually happening. It's different from a film. And you mm. get to live with this book for, for days and days. The film is over in two hours. This this story spun out slowly and you've got all that mm. detail. I prefer movies. OK, boys. If the boys are going to do well in the competition, they will have to read in their spare time, something most of them rarely do. Ross is one of Gareth's reading ambassadors, but he's not usually a fan of reading at home. I wasn't shocked that he came home with a book. I was more shocked the book he came home with. Just I never thought that would be his sort of thing. I don't know much about Shakespeare, but I have read a lot of his books and some of them are really good, but some of them I didn't like and this one I'm enjoying them. He does read, just not very often. <laughs> Like most boys. I think this book is actually really interesting and I do try and read it. I think it's actually better than playing the video games because it gets you really addicted and reading helps you read. I think Ross needs to be good at something. Uh, literacy would be a brilliant one, you know. I'd like him to do better than me. <laughs> For the next week, Gareth does everything he can to inspire the boys to read. From now on, reading is about adventure and fun and great stories. An extraordinary story, and it's about a guy called Horatio Nelson. Oates stood up in the tent and said, I'm just going outside. It's all about the sea. We're going to read a paragraph each. Go. It's hidden on an island called Babby Beezer. Turn this boat around now. Don't be such a wimp. The calm before the storm. The calm before the storm. It's the day of the first round of the Reading World Cup. Gareth has high hopes that competition is beginning to hook the boys in. Head teacher Chris Thurgood wants results. Every boy is supposed to have read an entire book. Now they've got to answer ten questions to prove it. It is worth guessing if you don't know the answer, but it's much better if you've read it. They're taking it very seriously. It's really good concentration. I think they, I think they care about winning. I've just got a few minutes left. Double check your answers. And then if you've finished, you can do what some of you are doing, just turn it over. Okay, I think we're almost there. Can you put your pencils down now, please? Good. Now don't run. Go and get your books sensibly. Thank you. Jack didn't read it. No question. Three out of ten. Didn't read it. Made no effort. I mean, I'd, I'd hoped that because he'd chosen the book, that this would encourage him to read it, but I just don't think he has. Right, Callum. No, that's wrong. That, that's a guess. I think he got two, and I think that was a 
frankly, I think that was a guess. This is my great hope. If they don't get into these books, they are not going to improve. And if they don't improve, I will have egg on my face. And Chris will beat me over the head with her statistics. I mean, she will. A lot rides on the success of this. Really feels like that because I, you know, I've come in here and completely destroyed the curriculum, and I'm doing all these fancy things. If it doesn't work, what's the point? Let's have a word. Come into the library. All right. I just want to have a quick chat with you about the Reading World Cup because you are, are you not, one of my Reading ambassadors? Ah, uh, you didn't do terribly well. And in fact, you got a couple of things like quite seriously wrong. So much so that it suggested to me that you hadn't read the book at all. Question one: Stormbreaker is. What was the answer you put? I didn't know what one it would be out of a like a computer or Electrides brother because Curtis was saying it was a computer, but I thought it was Electrides brother. Okay, well, firstly, you shouldn't have been talking to Curtis because you're supposed to do it on your own. You put B. Alex Ryder's brother, the answer is A, it's a computer. As one of my library ambassadors, you chose these books, and you chose this book, <laughs> yeah. So I expect you to give it a really good go, yeah? All right, off you go. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I did read it, but I, but I couldn't remember. I mean, he just didn't read it. He didn't read it. He cannot have actually read it. Oh, it's so frustrating. So we're going to go sensibly. No squabbling over where you're sitting. Thank you. Gareth gathers the boys to announce the results of the first round of the Reading World Cup. Getting three points was the young, handsome man. The boys' competitive spirit has been awakened. Which means the assassin readers get four points. Yes! But their tests show that most haven't finished their books. You guys, you can win this time because you've got an advantage. So really go for it. On your marks, set, group one, go. There are only five weeks until the end of term. On your marks, set, go. Time is running out for Gareth to reach the target he's been set of raising the boys' reading age by six months. Go. Competition alone is not going to be enough. I think that the change has to happen outside the school. It's, there's, there's plenty to do in school, but there is also a change outside school. You know, we need parents to be reading with their kids. We need dads to be involved in boys' reading. Good man. Come and line up in front of me. They, if the dad reads even a little bit, the boy will, will, will get into it and develop a habit of reading. Well done, boys. Good job. I think I have to tackle this head on. But nobody wants some patronising idiot like me coming along and telling them what's good for their kids. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. Gareth's taking the plunge. Today, he's invited the mums and dads of all 39 boys to meet him after school. The meeting's about getting the parents on side, getting them understanding what I'm doing with the boys, and also getting them involved in the Reading World Cup, because I want them to be reading with their sons, really helping them, encouraging them. So if this goes well, it could really help, really do the boys some good. And if it doesn't go well and they don't turn up, then I will know the scale of the task ahead. Lovely to see that they've all turned up. Maybe we've got one. Oh, and the one's a teacher. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two dads. Two governors. One dad's the um, husband to a, one of our TAs. Wow. I two. saw about six dads of boys going in the opposite direction about 15 minutes ago. They could so easily have stayed. Mm. We need to think of other strategies to get, yeah. get that involvement, don't we? Yeah. Gareth is tipped off that there is one more dad still outside the school. Max, don't do that. I don't know, is that mate still going on? His son Max only scored four out of ten in the first test. Hi, are you Max's dad? Yeah. 
Hello, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, you've just been named and shamed by someone. And, I might <laughs> so, yeah. Which one? Um, it could be anyone. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to briefly talk to you about, about Max's reading. Yeah. I'd want to get dads into reading. Yeah. Um, and reading with their sons. Yeah, no problem. Um, so what I, what I was going to suggest is maybe find finding time to just sit down side by side. And read the same thing. Either read the same thing, that would be lovely. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know what he's reading. That would be great. Yeah, and then you can yeah. discuss it. Just, just yeah. 20 minutes of that. Yeah, that's all right. Gold give dust. Done. Give it a go. All right, nice to meet you anyway. You. I'll see you again. Yeah, definitely. Where? Max doesn't feel reading is going to be important to him. I'd like to be a footballer, but then you need a good education as well. And then I'd like to uh, work in McDonald's because you get McDonald's every night for dinner. And then I reckon I could be able to do the McDonald's or Burger King. Max's dad doesn't usually read with his son, but Gareth has got him thinking. I'm not surprised by it, but it's something I would never have thought about doing. When you think about it, it's a simple thing, and I mean, I like reading. So, I mean, if I can read the same book as him, I don't have a problem with doing anything to help him along. So, I can see how it makes a difference to him. Undeterred by the poor turnout at his parents' evening, Gareth's next move is to lure dads into school. I think last time I had two dads at my last event, so if, if anything, anything more than that will be a huge success. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get every dad, not at three in the afternoon, but just a few dads would really make the thing feel a bit more male. It's the day of a crucial England World Cup match. Dads, stepdads, granddads have all been invited to watch the game. Hello, dads. Yeah, it's, this is a great turnout. It's really, really good. I mean, it's a nice atmosphere, and it just feels so male. You know, it's brilliant. It's exactly what we need. I'm going to very subtly target these dads and, and guys and get them on board and try and get them to help me out with the reading. It feels like the fortunes of my reading success are hinge on whether England win or not. With the wind of a rare England win in his sails, Gareth seizes the moment. I am. How's your reading? Terrible. Is it really? No, I've got a We're not talking about, yeah. like, I'm, I'm not going to get you to read War and Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, just, <laughs> just something, just a kid's book. Yeah, I just wanted to chat about his reading, because you've been making great headway. I just wondered if I could persuade you to come into school, do some reading. But it's Jack's stepdad, who's Gareth's number one priority. OK, well, first off, um, is, it, uh, is it feasible that you could do some reading with him? At, At home, certainly, yeah. yeah. That'd be brilliant. At the moment, he's not quite where he ought to be. Yeah, so no, just, it's, yeah, yeah. And it, uh, little and often. The other thing we've been talking about is the dreaded Xbox. I mean, I think, you know, if he is alone, it match it with, with reading time. You know, like, you can do 20 minutes of Xbox after you've done 20 minutes of reading. That'd be brilliant. Thank okay, yeah, you. Awesome. Number one. Tick. Good. Okay. Thank you. 20 minutes of reading, then the rest of the makeups. No, it's not how it's going to be anymore, mate, I'm afraid. Right, so one chapter of this book's like five minutes for Xbox. There's more to life on Xbox, as your mum's told me plenty of times. Not really, I have my life. Well, when you get into the real world, it's not that, unfortunately. So, what I would like is for you to choose your next book. So that table may go first. With less than a fortnight to go until the Reading World Cup final, the boys are now vying to get through their books and win points for their teams. Some are even reading in the library at lunchtimes. Well, look, you've got to put in some time. But Gareth notices that one boy, Tanik, doesn't seem to be reading at all. Hi, Tate. Morning. How are you? Good. You all right? How's the book? Good. Yeah? When they scored, they finished. Uh, just, just sound it out. 
Yeah. You good boy. How do you feel when you see a word you don't know? A bit confused and I feel like I've never heard of a word. Mm. Like when I have. And how does being confused make you feel? Sad and I feel like I'm daft. Do you? Do you think you are daft? Do you? Do you really? Yep. Oh, Tinique, that's terrible. Well, I'm here to tell you that you aren't. Absolutely not. One of the things that I've noticed about you is that you know lots of words. You might sometimes struggle with the word, getting it from the book. You know the words. You're clever. You know what exciting means. It's a problem, that's all it is. You're not dumb. You're not daft. That really upsets me, actually, to hear you say that about yourself. Because I, I really don't believe it. Because nothing that I have seen about you, Tanique, suggests to me that you are anything less than perfectly bright. Well done. Off you go. Feeling all right? Yeah. Good boy. I'm really upset. It's really upsetting to think that he thinks of himself as dumb. And the boy had tears in his eyes, and he said he felt stupid. I mean, that is so awful. And he's slipping through the net, and time's running out. Tanique's difficulties with reading have undermined his self-confidence. I didn't want to read, and sometimes if I knew we, we would have had to read, then, I f then I'd try and act it to be ill so I would, didn't have to go to school. As you know, the problem is not about motivation, so it's just about skill. Gareth holds an emergency meeting with the school about getting Tanique some extra help. He's one of several boys who've almost reached the end of primary school without a confident grasp of reading. Tens of thousands in Britain are in the same position. We've got four or five weeks left to turn. What can we do in that time? Tinik and Connor have several extra sessions with teachers. Gareth wants to help out too. And the crucial thing is that they want to improve. Tinik is really upset about his lack of reading prowess, and so is Connor. Hello, boys. Come on in. Come into the library. Great. Have a seat there. No, the it's not the Library of Doom at all. So I'm looking for the sound that that letter makes. This one is rrr. Mm. Like mm. Rrr. Rrr. Yeah, exactly. Grrr. Exactly. So sometimes that can be oo, and sometimes that can be what? Mm. Ook. Yeah. Look. Yeah. He, we, me, she, be. He, me, we, me, she, be. Good boy. And the sound is? E. E. Yeah, I think confidence is part of, like, the problem at the moment. We just like, hide away and behind your book and feel scared of it, feel more confident and fight the book. Now I can sound out the words easier because I should remember them words from that session. We've got two boys there, and Tanique and Connor, who just can't get by at the moment, and who are desperate to read. It feels so vital. It feels so vital, especially for Tanique, who's about to go to secondary school. I mean, it's just, it's so important. A few days later, Gareth comes up with his own way to help rebuild the self-belief of Tanique and the other struggling readers in his class. What we're going to do is, you're going to get a series of envelopes. Here is envelope one, and it says Connor B. When you open this envelope, there will be instructions on it. It's a practical lesson designed to show them what they're capable of. He takes them on a treasure trail, which can only be completed if the boys read carefully through some precise written instructions. Now, what does it say? So walk past the green school fence. So we're still doing that, aren't we? What's the next the thing? Two houses with the number 33. And what's the next thing say? Take your first left. That way. So hang on. So before we do that, we have to read that sentence. When you when you reach Clive Field, cross over the road to the red post box. Okay. Should we do that then? Yep. All right. Wait for the car. Let's go straight across here, shall we? Okay, look, it's there. 
Yeah. Well done, Connor. Who does it say? Tanique. Walk past the pillars and on the common. And read that again. You missed the word. Onto there. the common. Here we go. Yep. Let's go. Okay, Tanique. It's going well so far, yes? Yep. No mistakes. No mistakes. I like it. Oh, who's farting? I think it's the horses. Oh. Head. 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 Hedges. Hedges. Hedges, good boy. So where are they? Can you see any so large north. groups of hedges? Over yeah, there. Two. Okay, Tanit, wait, wait when you get there. They absolutely love it. It's brilliant. And there's, there's growing confidence. Tanit, yes, let's I have know. a round of applause for Tanit. Well done, Tanit, you've got to talk about it. The trail takes the boys deeper into the woods until their growing reading prowess is finally rewarded. It's a picnic! A picnic! Let's take it away from the woods. One, two, oh! Oh! oh, wicked. There's a plate for you. There's a plate for you. What would have happened if, if you'd given up in the middle, like some of you do with books? What would have happened? We'd have been lost. We'd never have made it home. Hand on heart, who's guessed in the tests? Right, OK. So what would have happened if we'd guessed today? Yeah. I all mucked up. We would have got lost. We would have got mucked up and lost. I've had tears out of most of these kids at some point because they just feel so behind. And today they really succeeded. I think I'm, I'm really happy about that. It's really, really nice. And I think they got confidence from that. I think this is this marks a turning point for all of them. What a lovely day. Isn't it really lovely? With one week to go until the finale of the Reading World Cup, the competition is finally drawing in even the most reluctant readers. Can you test me? You said your word. Yes, I will. Off to go. Go to break. Go to break. What is the county in England that the boys are from? Sussex. No, um, Suffolk. Well done. A lot of the time it's something that I can't do or I can't be bothered with, but this is actually not bad because he's really not fighting for something. The weekly tests show more boys are reading their books from start to finish. I've been working really hard at reading my book because I think I really like this book and I wanted to really have to try hard for my team. William Payne got 10 out of 10. Curtis got 10 out of 10. Well done. There are more 10 out of 10s, which is fantastic. And some people who frankly hadn't bothered up till now have made something of an effort. Max got four last week, <laughs> but this week you completely turned it round and you got 10 out of 10. It's Max, well done. Well done, Max. Great job. There you go, man of the match. Okay. I've been enjoying reading because Mr. Ryan's put it in a more fun way for us. Instead of just sitting at home reading a book, he's made it into a little competition. I think with Max, the big, the big success is getting Dad to read to him and Dad to be involved. Um, I think that's what that's what's done it. <laughs> Did you win? Yeah, he got man of the match. Did he? Were you reading it together, Max? Yeah. Well, he done a few chapters, and I'll do a few chapters. And well, done. look, keep it, keep him on it if you possibly can. Yeah, definitely. Have you got your books with you? Upstairs. Go and get it now. You'll need it over the weekend. How are you going to read it, Max? Most dads don't read with their boys, and Gareth wants a final push to get as many as possible to give it a try. OK, so here we are in my favourite place. Yeah, mine too. He's come up with an ambitious plan that'll need the approval of the head teacher. What I want to do is I want to bring the boys here mm -hmm. and I want to bring the dads in to read them stories. Right. I want to have a big bonfire and I want to have every, yeah, and then have everyone sleep overnight in this fantastic place. And in really, tents or in the, yeah, in little shelters. It'd be brilliant. But in principle? Yes. I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite catch that. Candy. 
love it. Oh, I can be. <laughs> OK, reading ambassadors, this way. Good luck with that. I hope it goes well. The Reading World Cup final is now just days away. The final spur is to make sure each boy knows he can find an exciting book. So Gareth's reading ambassadors are about to relaunch the library, newly stocked with all the books they've chosen. I've watched me about 60 minute makeover and trying to do a whole library in 25 minutes is going to be hard. Pop hang that one up there. Doing an excellent job, boys. Go. Gareth wants the library to become a place where boys feel at home. Will you go out into the playground with a megaphone and say... Here we go. Attention, attention, everybody. The school library is now open. Woo! Business. <laughs> Boys in the library, come on, everyone. I'm going to see what library is now open. At the moment... No one is going in. Don't open it yet! There's a lot of people out there, I better run! <laughs> right, I'll scan. Yeah. I'm scanning, it's fun. I absolutely loved Jack. Loved. The most reluctant reader I've ever met. He's the librarian. He's taking it really seriously and he's been given this responsibility. It's fantastic. This is a major success. I've just got Max Flash out of the library and me and Curtis have got it so we're going to read it together and slowly read it. And if Curtis gets stuck on a word, I can help him. And if I get stuck on a word, Curtis can help me. Well, it's a comic, really. Don't forget to come back! Good work! The rest of the wiki is onwards and upwards. On the eve of the campout, Gareth goes all out for a big turnout from the dads. Hello, Neil. Um, it's uh, Mr Malone here, Gareth, uh, from Pear Tree Mead School. Um, I was hoping that you might be able to come tomorrow um, with Jack. Oh, fantastic. Afternoon off. Excellent. Uh, I was just phoning to see if I can arm twist you into coming tomorrow. Excellent. I'm um, sorry I can't promise you any beer, but uh, we'll have a good time nonetheless. Camp out night is really important. Getting the dads reading to the boys around the campfire is my, is my ultimate weapon, really, in, in just rubber stamping reading for these kids. The really important thing is to attract the dads to come. So I'm not offering cakes. I'm not, we're not going to be sitting around doing girl-friendly activities. We're doing men's stuff. Tonight, almost all Gareth's 39 boys will be sleeping under the stars. Can you feel any sticks? No! Are you happy to sleep there? Yeah! There you go. Hey! Right, let's get these on quick. And the lineup of fire making, den building, and sausages has brought an impressive turnout from the dads. I think this is sort of the ultimate boy night. I mean, you can see them at the mall, they're all running around, they're doing little things, and they're, they're having fun, and this is just really nice to see. I'm clearing my space. Look, there's loads of things here. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good for them, they'll have a laugh tonight. Is it rabbit time? Yeah. There's even a demonstration of how to make rabbit stew. Oh, there's a rabbit. I'm quite glad that they look sort of slightly cured and dead. So we've got to take the skin off now. Get your thumb in and just yank the rest of the fur off. Easy. What the dads don't know is that Gareth plans to ask them all to read stories to the boys. I'm just building up to asking some of them because I feel a bit of nerves. I think once they've eaten and they've got into it a bit more. Boys, uh, the reason that I've got you all here today, it's actually about reading. I think, it, I thought, what better fun 
than reading ghost stories around the campfire with our dads. The ghost train. Billy Trent ran down towards the common, sandy hair poking like straw from under his cap. He reached the entrance and passed beneath a banner that read, the biggest travelling fair in Britain. Who's going to go next? Me. No, I know, I'd like a dad to read. Who's going to go next? Max's dad. A jolly red-faced man dressed as a clown called to him. Who's that? On your own, son. Enjoy all the fun of the fair. Yeah. Billy nodded eagerly, <laughs> too excited to speak, for the fair came only once a year and he'd saved hard for the occasion. Okay, next, next one. Me! Me! Next Can I? Me! Next dad, please. Come on, dad. Oh, okay. oh, zombie. In a shadowy empty space behind the fortune teller's tent, he found himself between two youths dressed in jeans and leather jackets studded with stars. The big one with a scarred face gripped Billy's arm. My dad, my dad, my dad! Instantly, Billy twisted it like an eel, slipped from Eddie's grasp and ran off as hard as he could go. The ghost train gathered speed as it rumbled into the tunnel. In the darkness, Billy gulped. There, something was the most peculiar such thing the fellow ever saw. I have to say, Dads, uh, Pretty good reading. very good reading, and also, <laughs> I think that is the quietest I've ever heard them. So, so thank you for that. <laughs> Boys enjoyed themselves. It's uh, it's been a few years since I've ever actually sat around a campfire and read stories. Once the dads go home, the storytelling goes on. One night there was a monkey in a sleeping bag. And he screams! This is about telling the boys that you can be a man and macho and strong and do all those boys' activities and still read and that they're not incompatible. I've really struggled with whether or not all this dangerous dangerous activity actually does any good and I really believe in it now, I really do because you can see the effect that it's having on the boys and their self-confidence, they believe in themselves and their ability to tackle a problem, that's what's at stake you know, whether it's reading or it's crossing a river with just a rope that's, that, that gives you a, a confidence for life Tomorrow's the final of the Reading World Cup, and there have been changes in Jack's household. We stopped him going on the Xbox when he first came in, and he has to read and that first, and he does read a little bit, and I've still now started to let him read when he goes to bed. He always does that, and he makes sure he reads now because he knows that I'm going to then ask him questions. So he's, uh, Mr Malone did give me some good ideas, and they do seem to be working at the moment. I turn my Xbox off, then I, I read like 45 minutes before I go to bed. Now I've started reading this book, it's quite interesting, and um, like books like this would um, almost like build my confidence up. It's the finale of Gareth's Reading World Cup, the final measure of whether the boys really have become enthusiastic readers. Before the big team showdown, there's one more set of individual tests to mark. Gareth's aim was that every boy would at least finish one book. Up to this point, Jack has failed every week. There's one person in this room that I need to just draw attention to. And this person in the first week, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be brutal, I'm going to be cruel, I'm going to be hard. He did rubbish. But I said to him, if he made a fantastic effort this week, and got over eight points, I would do a dance. Me. Jack Loft, you got eight. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, I read it a lot more than what I it was reading. I was proud that I got a good score. I got Mr Malone to do the dance. That's, that's what I, um, a lot of people were proud of, that I got him to do the dance. That is nothing short of a miracle. Jack Law read a book. It's the final showdown. In their teams, the boys will be tested on all the books they should have read in the last four weeks. The Reading World Cup final is about to commence. Round one. Choose your answer 
Hold up your cards after three, two, one. The answer to that was A, Marshall. I have a really strong sense that some of these boys have definitely improved because they've put in so much effort to it. Quiet, please. The final. This is it. This is the big moment for everyone. We've been working towards this for weeks and weeks. This is the result of all your fantastic reading. OK. The final question with just one point in it. The boy, Todd, counts to 100 how many times? Is it A, one time? Is it B, two times? C, three times? Or D, four times? Hold up your cards. <laughs> the answer was letter B, two times. <laughs> the winner! of the Pear Tree Mead World Cup of Reading 2010 is the Teletubbies yeah! United. Yeah! 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 Wow, they really care about this. It's like lifeblood competition. Listen to that. The prize is nice, but what counts is you tried. You tried really hard. Reading used to be boring. I gave it a go and um, I really like it. I'm really into it. Never used to finish a book, but since the Reading World Cup happened, I've finished um, two books. So I'm happy about that. and it, and uh, I'm quite proud that I've read two really long books. My reading, my reading was like good before, but it's even brilliant, it's more good now. If I keep going like I am, I might be able to challenge harder books. Then the harder books might not be, beat me, then, I, then I, the harder books I might go even, even higher to higher books than hard books. The important thing is that their attitude to books has definitely changed. Books have become something really exciting. Books were at the heart of this event where everyone was cheering and whooping. It was the competition that hooked them in. They wanted to win, and winning meant reading, so they read. And this works, it works with boys, it really does. Next time, Gareth faces an even greater challenge. Come over here, young man, right now. He has to make boys enjoy writing. This year, year five and six, are going to be writing the school production. I'm a bit scared. Take this moment to be proud of your achievements. And a single test will reveal the success or failure of his entire strategy. Some of them are just hopelessly lost. The results of the uh, reading tests. It's D-Day. It is D-Day. Gareth and the teachers have written a special blog. Check it out and have your say online at bbc.co.uk forward slash school season. Next tonight, BBC Two is doing the best thing possible to the week, and that is mocking it.